Hi guys, I am so sorry that we can't get together and be in class together, but I just came home from Alaska and I'm going to tell you a whole lot about Alaska. We're going to do a little bit of a study on it, but I bought three special books while I was there and I'm going to read each one of those to you on a different set of videos so that you can enjoy them as much as I did and then we can do some research. So the first one is a story called Granite. And this story is about a musher who lived in Alaska. Her name was Susan Butcher and her very special dog named Granite. Above Susan Butcher's head here, it says Iditarod Champions. And Susan Butcher was a musher. She races dogs in the snow in Alaska. She's from Fairbanks. And let me tell you a little bit about why she really stuck in my mind as somebody I wanted you guys to hear about. So, are you ready for our story? Here we go. This story is dedicated to all the dogs who preceded Granite, to his teammates who made his victories possible, and to all who followed in his footsteps. This is kind of what it looks like where she raced her dogs. Every year, a sled dog race crosses the frozen wilderness of Alaska. It is called the Iditarod. It starts in Anchorage and crosses three mountain ranges, two river valleys, and the frozen Bering Sea to end over a thousand miles later in Nome. The race honors the dogs and mushers who hauled mail, supplies, and life-saving medicine through the Alaska winters a hundred years ago. One dog in the Iditarod race came to epitomize the strength, courage, and intelligence of those dogs long ago. His name was Granite. So, this is a picture of Alaska, and the box shows what's over here, and it is where the race took place. And what's really interesting about this is that Alaska is our largest state. So even though in this map it looks really small, this particular race was a thousand miles. So it'd be like going from here in Oregon all the way down to like maybe LA, about, that's about the same distance. Susan Butcher lived alone in the Alaska wilderness with her sled dogs. Her home was a little log cabin. Susan was a musher, so in the winter she traveled across the snow-covered trails on a dog sled. The dogs loved pulling her sled, and she loved them in return. So, these are not boxes. These are little dog houses that are probably about three foot by two foot. And there's a post outside of each doghouse with a chain on it, and it swivels around so the dogs stay on a chain near their doghouse, and they can go round and round, but they live just like this. Most sled dogs never come inside because they are sled dogs, and they actually stay outside, and they're designed to be able to handle the harsh winters. One spring day, while Susan was feeding her dogs, she heard a familiar sound. Puppies! were being born. Quietly, she walked over to the barn. Listening at the door, she heard cooing. Slowly, she looked inside, and there on a cozy bed of straw were five newborn pups. Their mother gently nuzzled them and cleaned each one with her tongue as they curled up next to her. All of the pups were shiny, fat, and healthy, except for one. His fur was dull. He had knocked knees, and he let the other puppies push him away from their mother. Susan loved the puppies and was proud of each one. She was always showing them off to other mushers who visited. Again and again, the visitors would say they all looked great, except for the timid one. They said that he would never become a real sled dog and she should give him away to someone as a pet. But Susan believed in him, so she gave him a strong name. She named him Granite. So in this picture, do you see the puppy right here that is pushed away from the mommy from the other puppies? That little tiny guy is Granite. So um, Susan believed in him when nobody else did. And maybe that's why he did such great things. When the pups were old enough, she started taking them on daily walks in the woods. Susan and the puppies developed a close bond. Susan watched Granite and was impressed by his intelligence. He always knew where he was because he remembered the trails that they had taken before. 
even when they went somewhere new. He could find his way home alone, while his brothers and sisters closely followed Susan so they would not get lost. Every evening, they ran together to develop his strength. She was sure that someday he would race on her team. So here is a drawing of granite. And that is actually what he looked like because I saw a picture last week. And then this is what it looks like with her running. Notice there's no snow in this picture. In Fairbanks, Alaska, during the summer and the late spring, it is almost completely daylight with no darkness. So the temperatures warm up and you're able to run. You can't quite run like that when it's wintertime because there's way too much snow. Hold on, i got to try and turn my page. Granite grew to be about 58 pounds. He was deep-chested and a fast dog. He overcame his knock-kneed legs with a powerful stride. He pulled the sled better than the others, and his confidence grew. He learned to lead the team. Leaders need to be able to guide the team over rough trails, find the way when they are lost, and run fast. Granite did all three. After years of work, Granite became the main lead dog of Susan's racing team. At the start of his first Iditarod, Granite seemed to sense it was a race. He stood in front of the team with his head held high, waiting for the command to go. Finally, the race started and Granite charged down the trail. Susan was amazed by him. They stopped often to eat and rest. When it was time to go again, Granite would be the first to jump to his feet, barking and prancing, anxious to head down the trail. So I am trying to load a video, obviously not of Granite, but of some offspring that came from the same mom that Granite did, of what it's like when they're prancing and they're getting ready to run and how excited they get. And that's what Granite used to do. Soon, they were leading the race. One night, when they crested a small hill, there in the trail ahead of them stood an angry moose. Susan stopped the team to let the moose get away, but it didn't run. Instead, it charged into the team, kicking and stomping. Granite lunged at the moose, trying to protect his teammates, but the moose kicked him and he flew against a tree. When the attack was over, Susan saw the damage the moose had done. She gently carried her injured teammates before deciding that for the good of her beloved dogs, they should leave their dream of winning behind. They withdrew from the race. She took her bruised and battered team home, but she promised her dogs that the next year they would win. Look at that moose. So what's interesting about a moose is if a moose has um, babies around or it's looking for food and it can't find food, it becomes very mean and very aggressive and it can be dangerous to people, other animals, and that's exactly what happened. People doubted Susan and Granite. They often said, Susan will never win the Iditarod because she babies her dogs. Susan didn't listen to them. And she continued to care for her dogs as she always had. It was a long, hard year. Susan and the dogs worked tirelessly to recover. In the fall, Susan and her dogs started running every day and training for the race. This is a very interesting thing that mushers do. In the mornings, in the mornings they put a whole bunch of fish and tripe and like cow intestines and stuff into a pot a really big, huge pot outside, and they cook it. And then they turn it off probably about two or three o'clock in the afternoon so it can cool down a little bit. And then they mix dry food in with it. And you see this, this is actually a contraption that Susan created, and the lady we stayed with still uses the same kind that Susan taught her how to make. And they go around and they put one humongous scoop of this nasty smelling stuff in the dog's dishes. And they love it. And it's specially designed for them to be able to do their best running. I will finish in part two.